This past week, Senator Elizabeth Warren, who is a presidential hopeful, made a very bold step for the conservative and libertarian agenda. Warren is announcing that she's going to take a stand against the tech giants that censor and crush their competitors like Gab and BitChute. The only problem with all of this is that Elizabeth Warren is a Democrat. This whole thing came to my attention late last week when I saw this post on Elizabeth Warren's personal Twitter page. Facebook, Amazon, and Google have vast power over our economy and our democracy. They've bulldozed competition and tilted the playing field in their favor. Time to break up these companies so they don't have so much power over everyone else. Hashtag break up big tech. The first thought that I had when I first saw this post was whether or not Elizabeth Warren was going to continue to use the free advertising that many of these big tech firms tend to give to prominent Democrat candidates. And it turns out that isn't going to be the case. While they restored the ads, Facebook did take down many of Elizabeth Warren's ads concerning big tech and the fact that she wants to break them up. Now, Facebook didn't cite ideological differences, surprisingly, but they did cite the fact that Warren is using a slightly modified version of the Facebook logo in the ads, and that is against Facebook's terms of service, apparently. The good senator presented her ideas in a Medium article that she wrote and submitted. And in this article, there would actually be some good ideas that would really appeal to centrists, conservatives, and libertarians. Except for the fact that a lot of the ideas that Warren presents involve a lot of government involvement. But I'd like to go through the article just a bit and cite some of the points that Warren brings up in her argument as to why she wants to limit the power of these tech giants. One of the first things that Mrs. Warren points out is the fact that when the internet first started and antitrust laws were still respected very strongly, many of the things that were going on now would not have flown, especially back in the 1990s. One of the first things that she cites was the fact that Microsoft, the operating system giant of the 1990s, was trying to develop a search engine and develop algorithms that would keep people from using other search engines, or at least discourage them strongly from doing so. This action was struck down by antitrust laws in the 1990s, but I think back now to the fact that Google makes the operating system for my cell phone and my tablet, and they are one of the largest search engines in the country. Indeed, they also program their algorithms to do much the same thing that Microsoft was cited for back in the 90s. As Warren goes on in the article, she points out a couple of other ways that the big tech giants stifle their competition. Sites like Amazon and Google have marketplaces, which are a good thing. It gives an opportunity for third-party sellers to come on and sell their wares. However, the search results are skewed in a way that they favor the company that's providing the search results. And if it's not for the company that's providing the search results, it's for another company that's friendly to them. If you go and Google a product that you want to buy, one of the first things that you're going to notice is the fact that the first thing you see is the Amazon page for the item that you want to try and buy. Finally, in the case of companies like Facebook and Instagram, if a smaller company that provides the same good or service starts to rise up and may form a threat to the larger company, the larger company will just buy the other company out. After that, the larger company has the option to destroy the smaller company outright or promote it as another brand of the larger company, such as Facebook does with Instagram. Now, I feel that on the surface I could almost get behind Elizabeth Warren's proposal for all of this. I'm very torn in the idea. I have seen what some of these tech giants do to their competitors. Google forcibly pushes down Gab and BitChute, and the friends of all of the tech giants, the mainstream media, continue to portray sites like Gab and BitChute as Nazi sites and alt-right sites and just general evil sites in general. As we just mentioned, Facebook bought off Instagram when they started to rise up to a point that they were a threat, and Amazon has long since been accused of killing off brick-and-mortar stores around the country. But we also understand the fact that there's very little that the government does that ever turns out really good, and as a mostly libertarian person who stays in mostly libertarian circles, I do understand the fact that the less intervention that we can get out of the government, the better off we're all going to be. I do understand that government has a role in our lives, but 
we really do need to keep the government out of the majority of what happens in the business world. Now I can't close this video without telling you the audience some of my honest thoughts and one of the first things that I saw when I was reading to do this was involved in the Medium article but it was something that was itching on the back of my mind right from the beginning. Elizabeth Warren wants to designate huge companies that are $25 billion or more as public utilities. That's an idea that's been thrown around on the right as well. So that's not a new idea. But the point is that as a public utility, Google wouldn't have the power to throttle your competitors' responses as they come up in search engines. They wouldn't be able to throttle any sort of search engines at all in theory. But my first question on that is going to be, are these companies still going to be able to throttle the search results on political dissenters, politicians that they don't like, or any other sort of competition that goes against the government officials that have voted to put this law into place? Is censorship of political opinion still fair game, even if everything else is not? And honestly, looking at some of the people that support this, and especially the person that put it forward, I feel like political ideology might still be in play for some of these companies. Additionally, the inner conspiracy theory in me couldn't help but notice the connection that I saw when I started to realize the fact that Warren said she wanted to break these companies up rather than shut them down, or outright say that she wanted to turn them into utilities, and that has to do with campaign finance. It's not uncommon at all for a single CEO or company president to operate several different businesses all at the same time, especially if the businesses are related. Up here in the Rust Belt, you see a lot of production and manufacturing companies, especially in the food processing sector, where they'll have the manufacturing plant and then they'll own a transport company on top of it. Most of the time, the plant and the transport company will have the same or almost similar names they will be separate entities, they'll have separate tax IDs, but all of the money will still be going to and coming from the same pocket. These tech companies can break up into smaller entities, but they will essentially all be owned by the same person or the same series of people, and they will all be interrelated, even though they will likely all have different tax ID numbers. And that brings the idea of campaign finance into question, because all of these tech companies tend to be very friendly to the left and to left-leaning causes. So rather than fall under the auspices of one campaign finance donation, and the limits that come with that, they can now make several different campaign finance donations under the guise of several different companies still being owned by the same person and having that same person's ideology, but masked by the fact that they're all officially separate companies. I'm all in favor of breaking up some of these tech companies, but we need to do it the right way. If we invite more government into the regulation of these companies, we invite more government into our lives. And that never ends well for anybody. What we need to do instead is start to roll back some of the regulations and allow some of these smaller companies to flourish, to stand up and show the good ideas that they have and try and compete with the big boys. Take some of the gloves off that are restricting some of these small companies. Many of the legislations that were written by some of the larger companies and just let everybody compete freely. I leave you with one last point in which I may think that Warren might be onto something, even if I think her ideas may be misguided in doing so, and that's the concept of too big to fail. When you look at companies like Amazon going out and buying up Whole Foods, or companies like Google buying other companies like Waze, you see massive tech giants going out and diversifying their holdings in much the same way the automakers did in the 80s and 90s and even beyond into the 2000s. And that's part of the reason that our government felt that they needed to bail out companies like General Motors because they were too big to fail. It wasn't just going to take the car industry out if a company like General Motors fell. It was going to take out several points in the energy sector, several points in the private sales sector, several restaurants. There was so much else that was tied to GM by the time it was getting ready to collapse and the government bailed it out. And that was going to take out a massive sector of our economy. I don't necessarily agree with the bailout. I think that if the government was going to get involved, they should have forced the company to sell off, but 
If we let these companies start to diversify and merge up the way that they have, we run the risk of seeing the same thing happen. And if our economy does start to tank again, do we as the taxpayers really want to be on the hook for the bills of a multi-billion dollar multinational company? We saw it happen before and we saw the outrage from it and I'm not ready to see the outrage from it again. What do you think about Elizabeth Warren's antitrust proposal? Do you think it's valid or do you think it's the last gasp of a dying campaign? I always welcome a thoughtful and positive discussion in the comments section below and especially over on Twitter. That is at Ed's blog Twitter with a one in place of the eye. Thanks as always for listening to this show and supporting this channel. And remember, never take the words of bloggers, podcasters, or journalists as gospel. Find all the facts and draw your own conclusions. Take care. Best hiding place of